Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to do some slight overclocking on this 1080 Ti here. So I just got this 1080 Ti, and in the teardown video I said that it uh, does pretty well, and yeah, I want to prove that. So, um, this here 1080 Ti is Gigabyte's Aorus model, it is not the Extreme model. It's the regular Aorus, and as far as I'm aware, the difference is that this supposedly doesn't have a bind core like the Extreme, and also the PCB is missing a few capacitors, apparently. I haven't confirmed that, but I've been told that this one is missing some multi-layer ceramics that the Extreme apparently has uh, for, like, the core and memory output filter. Um, but other than that, it's uh, the same, and uh, yeah, so... Uh, we do also get this power limit. So, 375 watts. That is actually more power limit than the 2080 Ti Aeros Extreme has, which is a more power-hungry card, and even on that card, I wasn't able to hit the power limit. So, we're not gonna have any power problems with this. This is not gonna need to be shunt modded. Like, th this, is, th this is gonna be fine for the power limit. Um... And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do a full stock run of Fire Strike first, just to uh, show you where it uh, ends up at uh, for a baseline. Now my baseline is gonna be quite fast because this is uh, super light, Windows 11 actually. Uh, no particular reason why it's 11; it's just the OS I had. Uh, but performance-wise, it's fine. Like the super light version of Windows 11 is surprisingly good. Uh, let's just start this while I ramble a bit. Um, so yeah, so. The Ghost Spectre version comes with this like Ghost Toolbox thing right here. You can start that and it gives you access to some tweaks like enabling the Ultimate Performance Power Mode. You can disable the Spectre and Meltdown mitigations which gives you some more CPU performance. Um, and then I did the regular things like uh, setting Windows Display to Best Performance, doing the NVIDIA Drive optimizations. I did enable the LOD tweak as well as you can see right now. Uh, it's a bit blocky and the FPS counter is missing. Um, so we are going after HW bot rules here, which is just my standard. Uh, I don't really care that much about the uh, 3D Mark ranking. Um, and yeah. So the OS is about as optimized as I can quickly make it. Um, and other than that, the, the card is just completely stock, stock heatsink. I did replace it after doing the tad on, of course. But other than that, Card is stock, stock cooling, no mods whatsoever, uh, just what I got out of the box that it came in. Here is our baseline. We have a 32,414 graphics score, which is from scouring the uh, 3D Mark uh, ranking a bit about on par with like a 3060 Ti that's uh, like at above 2 gigahertz. Now, of course, this has some tweaks, um, but this card is only stock for now. So, yeah. Um, like, just generally, I think 1080 Ti's right now are a pretty good deal because, like, 250 euros is what this costs and it's getting you like 3060 Ti performance. Of course it doesn't do RTX and pulls about a bunch more power but like who really cares about that? I don't. Um, this is also cheaper and faster than Intel's cards uh, and I actually don't know what AMD card this, was, this would compare to. Um, the thing I can say is that uh, a friend of mine who has a 2080 Super did a little race uh, uh, against this card with his 2080 Super, and when it comes to Fire Strike, this card is crapping all over him. Um, like, I think his best attempt was like a 31,000, and this card is beating that at stock. Um, admittedly, in DirectX 12, especially Time Spy, the 2080 Super was winning again, but in DirectX 11, this card pretty much always at least matched the 2080 Super, and usually exceeded its performance. 
Um, so, yeah, like considering this is only 250 euros, this is a lot of performance. Like this is performance that's gonna be probably just fine for the next couple years. Uh, and like 250 euros is pretty cheap for a card like that that's gonna be able to hold for that long. Um, but anyway, so it is time to load the overclocking settings. <laughs> And I was not kidding when I meant it maxes out the slider. It does max out the slider. We are getting... If we look at GPU-Z. 16, 24, or like 25, depends on what software you use. Memory clock. Which I've been told, 1080 Ti's, like... Start at 1400 and end at 1650. So we are very close to the, like upper end of where the memory can and like this is literally the max uh, as to how you get to 1650 either by having a factory overclock on your memory or by using things like I, as far as I know Nvidia Inspector might be able to go higher than plus 1000 um, but yeah like the memory clock on this is really good um, potentially because of the um, if you remember the teardown, the backside of the PCB, pretty much every memory chip has a 330 microfarad SMD polymer capacitor for it, which is not standard for 1080 Ti's. So that might be why. As for the core clock, I did put it to locked voltage, and you know, our power limit is high enough, so we're not voltage throttling, and it's set to 2050 core. Now it's gonna run a bit lower than that. This is like where it starts and then immediately drops down. Uh, as far as I know, core clocks for the for 1080 Ti's, this is not anything super exciting. I think it's a bit above average. I think the average is around 20, 25 um, for 1080 Ti's. Um, so the core is not exceptional, but I've been told that on 1080 Ti's, memory is a lot more important than core actually. So, and my memory is really good. So, yeah, that's that's great I guess. Uh, power limit, of course, max at 150% because oh, we're going from 250 to 375. Um, so yeah, this is applied now, and let's uh, let's watch this 1080 Ti crush some scores. Okay, we have a result, and we have blown right past 33,000. Now it's only like slightly above 1,000 points extra, because the core clock on this is already pretty much maxed out. Uh, the, the card comes at around 2 gigahertz base, and we just went to like 2025, 20, 2050. 20, it's like, actually, I was kind of hoping it would go a bit higher than 2025. 20, uh, there is a step in between 2015 and 2025, which is... I have seen a higher score than this before. Like, I got an overall 27, 330, I think, and this was a bit higher too. Uh, I think I have that... Yeah, it's a 656 instead of a 622. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that one was even better. Well, it's also 25 only though. So, uh, there might be more in this card if I give it better cooling. Um, cause it, it might boost a little better. But yeah, so it, it can go into the mid to high 33,000 range in terms of GPU score, which is really good. Like, really good. This is starting to touch, like, a blower 2080 Ti on, like, stock settings. That's, like, an entire generation, just... Of extra performance. Now, admittedly, the 20 series wasn't that big of a jump over the 1080 Ti. Like, the 1080 Ti is just that good of a card. 
But this is only 250 euros right now. Like, these are, these are, like, in my opinion, really good deal right now. Like, maybe there's a, some other card that's, like, really cheap right now. But I just noticed how these just dropped in price dramatically once the 40 series came out. And, like, this is not that different from the 20 series. But it has so much better value because this is so much cheaper than the 20 series cards right now. And it's just, like... Look at that score. Like, this, my 8700K is actually becoming a problem now. <laughs> Even though it's at 5.3 gigahertz, it's just like... My GPU score is, like... So much higher than the CPU score now. Like, this is becoming the bottleneck. So, like, an overall score, I can probably just not compete with this. Uh, this is probably, like, if I sub this, it's gonna be geographic score only. Um, but, yeah, like, this is a really fast 1080 Ti. So, I got really lucky, I think. Uh, it, it's kind of similar to my 2080 Ti, which also has a, like, meh core, but really good memory. Um, so, yeah, and uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Like, it's a really nice card. And I also have to say, like, in videos and on images, this cooler always looks really ugly. But actually, in real life, this looks really nice. This is a really nice looking heatsink in real life, but like, uh, if, if, if you take images of it, it just always looks really cheap and crappy. Um, so, yeah, but in real life, this is a really nice looking heatsink, and it's not even all that loud. Like, the fans are maxed right now, and it's like, barely any louder than, than the fan I have just over my RAM uh, or from the test bench. So, yeah, I really like this card. Uh, th this is this is now my fallback card should my 2080 Ti ever die. Not that I'm expecting it to ever die, like that 2080 Ti is living a very, very easy life. It's like water cooled and undervolted all day. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I really like this card. Um, now, I'm not gonna do any extreme overclocking with it because it is my fallback card. I, I want to keep this in sort of stock condition. I might do some like very light mods, um, but basically the same idea as the 1070 goes with this. Like the 1070 used to be my backup card, which meant that I'm not gonna do anything that might break it, uh, as secure as I might be in my abilities. Um, of course, that that I have this card now means that the 1070 is up for grabs for mods. Um, but I might do some more, like running some other benchmarks on it, trying some water cooling maybe. Um, we'll see what we can do. Um, until then, this should be the video, so, yeah, uh, thank you for watching, I hope you find this card as exciting as I do, and until next time, goodbye. So, funny thing, after recording the video I ran the card again and I, uh, smashed 34,000 GPU score. So... Yeah, uh, I didn't record that run, so it's just kind of tacked onto the end of this video, but there's there's more left in this card. Um, you'll potentially see it again when I can think of something interesting.